Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at a gamma material. A gamma material is a tool set that you can use to create PBR materials and it's also used for making your PBR textures and also painting directly onto your model. So just think about this tool like where Substance Painter and Substance Designer actually got married and you know, they made a little baby. And the beautiful thing about this is this is available for free. So just in case you wanna get this, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can go over to the itch.io page and grab this one so you can either grab this as an installation file or zip file so that you can actually start working with it currently the version that is available is a gamma materials version 0.6 and this is just you know it's just beautiful all right so without further ado let's dive directly into a gamma materials and take a look at how this actually works so with this open right here you would notice that it looks very simple and by the way for you to actually get things happening you need to go over to file and you know go over to new by default once you open this for the first time it's going to ask you what you would like to create and you can choose to move to create procedural materials or you can simply do paint on mesh and once you select this you need to give it a name you need to import the file and you need to select if you want y to be upwards or downwards or you know depending on how you want to work all right so once you're done with that you need to simply click on done to get this one happening right now i don't want to have anything because i've already opened this one and we would go through and talk about how this works so just like your other traditional tools that you get to work with this works in a very similar fashion you have your 3d view which you can actually work with and navigating this is super simple you simply use your right click. So I think this tool is heavily right click oriented. You will figure out why I said this. And that is just one thing to keep in mind. The left click has nothing to do. The middle mouse just simply pans this, all right? Pans it left and right. And you can use the middle mouse to scroll up and scroll down to zoom in and out. And then use the right click to kind of orbit around it. And right over here is where you get to see your tiles, all right? Your texture tiles exist right here. And you can also see that your texture sets are right over here. So I guess this tool supports multiple texture sets. I've not tried it with a model with multiple texture sets. So I guess it supports multiple texture sets. And right over here is where you get your painting. So it's more like a substitute for Substance Painter. So in case you don't want to purchase Substance Painter or you're looking for a tool that you can actually pick up for free and start doing substance like stuff, you want to start painting real quick. You don't want to wait for no one. Then this is something that you should use. Now, working with this is as easy as day. Within the project section, you get to find your projects. You can add new projects file there. If you want to add new images, you can import new images right here. This is the mesh that we're working on right over here. And right here is where your materials exist. So working with this one is super easy as all you need to do is add a fill. If you want to start painting, you can also add a paintbrush and you can actually start doing that painting right over there. So depending on what you want. So if we'd like to paint across this, we can just simply go in and start painting really really quick and you can see what we're doing and if you scroll down you'll notice that we have the properties all right so within the properties this is where our brush setting is and we can make changes to this brush setting so if we want to increase the size we can actually do that if we would like to change the angle we can actually do that as well if we want to increase the spacing for the painting we can do that so let's say we want to change the color to something like red and we want to start painting red you notice because of all of that setting that we've made we are now getting some cool stuff by default symmetry is turned on and you can actually use symmetry to do some stuff like that now that is one of the places where i kind of think i haven't seen a place within the ui where you can turn the symmetry off yet so i think that is just one of those things that you just have to deal with because you know you're working with a free tool all right so with this you can do some painting and once you're working on the painting if you like to clean things up you can actually switch over and use this to clean things up we can go back and let's turn that spacing down increase the brush size and let's clean these things up really really quick all right so you would also notice that right over here you have different sets that you're painting on so you have different material set that you're painting on you can choose to turn off these ones if these are not the ones you want to paint on and you can choose to turn them on i can go down to the second section and you notice that our fuel layer consists of albedo normal metallic roughness ambient displacement and also emission and that is not what we have over here so depending on what you like to do you can simply use the texture channels to do that stuff so 
for a situation like this, let's say you want to mask, you probably you're asking how do you mask? How you can mask is simple. Right click and add a mask. If you would like to add a black mask, a white mask, you can simply do that. So for this case, if we add a black mask and switch this from erase to paint and start painting, you would notice that we're painting these things back in. We can also do the same thing with the white mask as well. So if you want to paint things in, you can actually, you know, take advantage of this. And you can also paint right here. So it's not necessary that you must paint directly in the 3D viewport. You can also paint directly on the texture, you know, on your texture set as well. So this way you can have some very cool and lovely stuff happening. So with this as well, if you want to add some generators to your mask, you want to add some more stuff, you can actually go over to your mask, right click, and you can choose to add some generators. All right, so let's right click, go over to your generators. You can throw in a simple perlene generator and you can select that generator and start using this to do some stuff. Of course, you will probably not see any effect of this happening. So let's go ahead and turn this off. All right, so with that off, we'll go back to the perlene. We can now use the generator to make some changes. So we can make some changes like so we can change some very cool stuff all right so we can make some changes we can play with amplitude and we can use this to drive some very cool effects all right look at this and at any point you want to add some more stuff you can simply click to add some more and if you already have a material that you've made or you have a material that you want to work with you can simply drag that material and drop it right over here and once you drop that material automatically it overrides and you can do some stacking so if you want to stack this down or you want to stack this on top you can actually actually use the stacking method to stack this like you would normally in Substance Painter. And to any of these materials that you've just added, you can also add a mask to them. So for example, if we want to add a black mask to this one, we can also do that. And for this mask, we're not going to use the painting this time, we would simply go over to where we have patterns. So we can actually throw in a simple pattern like that and we can specify what kind of patterns that we're looking for. So if we're looking for a circular pattern, we can play with how much this pattern gets to repeat. And you can see we're having something like that. We can also play with the spacing and you can see we have this you know, lovely stuff going on right here. And at any point, you also wanna add some more just simply drag, drop, and you have these materials for your personal use. So this is a, this is a very cool tool in terms of painting. It's quite basic, but it gets the job done. Now, if you now want to create material by simply going over to new and you know defining the material, you'll notice that we have a material section that kind of emulates what you would do with Substance Designer in a light state, okay? So let's say you wanna create materials. It's very easy to create materials right here. And just like I said, everything is heavily right click. So if you press your tab key, press space bar, nothing works. You have to use right click to actually get something happening. So for this, you can go through and search maybe for the constant, if you want to do some math, if you want to do some conditional stuff, if you want to do some generators, you can actually do this. So for this example, let's grab a shape. Let's see if we have one. So we'll simply go ahead and look for generator shape. We can wire this generator shape directly to the albedo and this is set to square. So let's also grab this. This is set to square. We can set this to pyramid. We can set this to whatever we want. So maybe a ball, or we can actually set this to a disc. I think this looks good. And we can play with the disc depending on what we want. If we'd like to get some tiling for that disc, we can also do some tiling like so. If you want to preview these as a 3D object, you can. And you would also notice that with your right mouse button, you can rotate across this. If you want to have a node view, you can also use the node view to preview that. Or you can set this one to 3D. Now with this set, if you're also feeling excited and maybe this is all you want to create, you can also do some very nice heights to normal stuff, which would actually give you that height to normal feel. So you can connect these other one to normal and then connect this one right over here to the source. And you'll notice that we're beginning to get that cool stuff going on there. If we want to add some more things, let's say we want to add some noise. Let's see what noise do we have? So we have a couple of noise here. We have uh, the parallel noise, which is good. So we can grab that parallel noise and we can connect that right over to a section like that. And let's see what we can do with it. So with the parallel noise, we can play with the scaling and we can also do some stuff like that. You can also choose to disorder this noise depending on what you want to get. And because this is a new material that we're creating, automatically you would notice that that material exists here. And that's about it. For those who would like to try this, you can simply go over here and take a look at some of the renders that they have and see some of the you know materials and material kind of things that they've created. And for those who would like to play with this, you want to use this for 
your texture in and yes you can also notice that it supports multiple texture set so for those who like to use this for the texturing you can actually get started with this one and start using it i would love to see maybe some sort of lazy mouse effect or probably see some turning off of symmetry stuff coming to this tool so tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace